You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody. That music can mean but one thing. It is Education Wednesday. It is time once again to hold court on the land of options, trading, and trending, and analysis, and all sorts of educational topics in the world of options. Yes, it is time once again for Options Boot Camp. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting Options Insider radio network you know where to get at us now if you're just listening to boot camp a we love you but b you're missing out on so much other stuff really we will keep you engaged informed dare i say it possibly slightly mildly entertained as well who knows gotta check it out for yourselves so wherever you're getting this content upgrade to the full network that'll get you volatility views double dose of option block that'll get you the advisors option this week in futures options a crypto rundown and on and on it goes opr all sorts of great stuff coming at you. So a couple of shows, usually a day. So wherever you're listening to this, upgrade to the full network. A, B, if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing. I know a lot of you have. It really does help the new folks discover the shows. Keep those questions and comments coming. I know a lot of you have. We're doing our able best to keep our heads above water with your questions. There are so many, but we'll get to a bunch of them, pay them off today. And joining me to help me do just that, he is the black-hatted one himself, the founder of Market Taker Mentoring, author of one or two options-oriented tomes, none other than Mr. Dan Passarelli, founder of Market Taker Mentoring, and again, the black-hatted one. Mr. P, welcome back to the show, sir. Great to be back. I'm excited to hear what we have in store for today, my friend. All right, let's do it. It's always a wild one when we unleash the listeners, so let's get to it. A little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail call, the portion of the show where you guys take the range, your questions, your comments, your insights. I like to kick things off these days, damn, with a little bit of love. There's a lot of, lot of craziness floating around out there, so let's set the tone in a positive manner. If you like what you're listening to, you can rate and review just like Andre, Andre K7 did. I'm not sure if this is from iTunes or Google or Spotify, or wherever this came from. One of those platforms out there, maybe the App Store. He just says, great program. Thank you. So short and sweet to the point. We love you back, Andre 7 k or Andre K7, everyone else who takes the time to rate and review our stuff out there. It really does help a lot of new people discover the world of options and indeed discover the content. So keep it up if you like what you hear. Dan, what do you think about that little dose of love to start our day here, sir? I love love, Mark. Well, that reminds me. I think you got a haiku somewhere stored up for us. You had a couple of weeks to work on it now. How's that haiku about love coming, sir? Oh, man, I got to Google the structure for that stuff. I, I, I'm, more a, I'm more a free-form poet, Mark. I see. You, you don't obey the laws of rhyme and scale and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Iambic pentameter, not a fan, Mr. Dan. All right, let's keep rolling then instead out to some more of our listeners. Actually, we got a fun poll going on right now, Mr. P, testing our audience's long-term optimism. We asked you quite simply, 
If you had to buy a 10% out-of-the-money call that expires at the end of the year, December 31st of this year, which one of these four underlyings would it be? We wanted to give you more choices, but you know we did it on Twitter. They limit you to four. So you have your four choices, VIX, a.k.a. equity volatility, the S&P 500, I don't cure your flavor, SPX, SPY, pick your poison out there, or Bitcoin, go on the crypto route, or let's get commodity, let's go crude oil. And right now, Dan, it's a pretty hot and heavy battle. If you're listening after the fact, listen, I think by the time this podcast goes live, you may be too late. Listen in live right now on the live stream. You can go in and vote whenever you want to play with our polls or check to see if we have a new poll live. Just go to at options on Twitter. That's where you'll find all this stuff. Right now, Dan, Bitcoin edging it out ever so slightly, 31.4% saying Bitcoin, followed by the SPX with about 27.9%. Crude oil, number three, 24.4%. And the VIX bringing up the rare at 16.3%. But yet again, it's a pretty evenly distributed list. I thought it might be a little bit more contentious out there. It might be a little bit more, you know, in one direction <laughs> than, uh, than it's turning out to be, Dan. What are your thoughts here on what our listeners are voting for? And do you have a vote? Sure, have at it. Man, Mark, this is a good question. You come up with some pretty good questions every now and then, my friend. We have our moments. Yes. Um, boy, this is good. I'm looking at this. And I am not terribly surprised that this is how it went down. Um, <clears throat> boy, I mean, if I had to predict the distribution here of votes, I don't know. It's easy to say in hindsight, but I bet I, I bet I would have guessed the distribution similar to this. It's tough to say, you know, the VIX, uh, because of how it expires, that, that would be, you know, the VIX is expiring higher on December 31st. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be putting my money in that. If I was spreading, I'd be shorting those and buying some of these other ones. Bitcoin is just huge, hugely speculative. But, you know, I mean, for me, when I'm buying out of the money calls, it's a speculative bet. So if I was doing that with some risk capital, just some, you know, disposable money, Bitcoin would probably be a good guess. That said, it's like I'm getting nosebleed just thinking of the price of Bitcoin. So I think the S&P 500 probably has the best chance of being higher. But, you know, that's a long term option. There's time decay. Crude. I mean, crude. Is it really going to take off from here? I don't know. It might. I mean, price of all commodities is going up with inflation. Uh, boy, Mark. I mean, yeah. What a good question. I mean, I guess if I had to go with one. I'd probably spec on Bitcoin. Certainly not a hard one to, to put some speculative dollars behind these days. It has been moving and shaking. It's certainly not a hard one to vote for in a poll where it's all about what can move the most. Uh, Neil Wales has chimed in. He's voting a lot of our stuff. He says he went for crude oil. He wanted to just share that with us. Well, okay, Neil. Uh, Tin Man John 64 says silver is better than all of these choices. Yeah, I wish we could have had 50 choices. Right? I wish we could have had some metals and everything else. But you only get to four. Tin Man John, but that metal, one of the shiny ones would have been a fun one there as well. All right, let's keep on rolling here. Dan, next up, LLTT dollar sign asterisk. <laughs> say that five times fast, I dare you. They write in to say, I get that I have leverage when I buy call options and that when my call options expire, I have to buy the stock. But can I then buy the stock on margin afterward? Or do I have to pay the full amount for the stock? Well, a pretty basic question here, Dan, Mr. LLTTS, or maybe Mrs. Sounds like they're joining in the call buying frenzy that is going on out there right now. What do you have to say for he slash she and everyone else out there who's confused about what they have to do after their their calls expire and they have to buy the stock, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, uh, great intro question. Glad to give an answer on this to help out some of the newer folks. Um, you know, just one little technicality, um, not to whatever here, but uh, technically, if the call expires, it's worthless and it just goes away and there is no exercise. So if it's in the money and gets automatically exercised at expiration, then yes, you would buy the stock at the strike price. And you could potentially buy the stock on margin, uh, which means you would uh, be able to put up 50% of the value of the stock or or less. That's what buying stock on margin means. So yeah, that is a possibility uh, given that your broker allows you to do that. You have that level of approval or whatever it is that your broker requires you to have. 
Yeah, the rules for stock buying don't change just because you're getting it through exercising an option. That's still the same. Yeah, you can buy your stock on margin just like any other time out there. All right, next up. This one I included, Dan, just because it's emblematic of a lot of questions we've been getting lately. And I don't mean this to pick on anyone out there. I just want to kind of discuss this a little bit because this question kind of scared me a little bit. This came from Halal or Jalal out there. He wrote in and says, hi, I bought my first option this morning for Bank of America for $40.08 for this Friday. Would it go up tomorrow, you think? <laughs> so we got that. And so we, we wrote back to them and say, well, you know, what are you talking about? What is the, there is no Bank of America option. Uh, he wrote back to say, I bought the Bank of America option and I got it on Webull. So he bought the one. He bought the one Bank of America option, Dan. And he writes back further to say, he says his max loss is unlimited. I'm not sure what that is. Can you tell me what that is? And then he finished up with another question saying, if my option expires tomorrow, what time would it expire? I'm in Chicago. So a lot to unpack there, Dan. Again, I don't say this to pick on anyone out there. Uh, I, we want all of our new lists. That's what this show is for. I'm just encouraging you, if, if you have these very basic structural questions about options, maybe you hold back on pulling the trigger for a little bit. You're doing the right thing. You're listening to our shows. Start listening to episode one of this, episode one of OPR. Maybe contact a guy like Dan or go to your broker, see what educational content they have available. Go to optionseducation.org. That's the OIC. They have a great free resource there as well. Do your darndest to educate yourself first. Paper trading would then be the next step I would recommend so you could learn some of this for yourself. Because obviously there is no Bank of America option. There are thousands of Bank of America options. There are calls, there are puts, there are different strikes, there are different months. Uh, so the notion that people come and they think they just get, and maybe some of this is also to blame on the platforms. You know, the Webulls and Robin Hoods have done a great job of making it easier, lowering the barriers to entry for options. But maybe something like this is an argument. Maybe they've made it too easy. Maybe they've gamified it a little bit too much. Maybe it's on them. They're not clarifying this enough to their end user saying, you know, you're not just buying the Bank of America option. You're buying a particular month, particular strike, a call or a put. There's a lot to unpack. At least there's one tangible question we can answer for this guy, Dan, which is he wants to know when his options expire if he lives in Chicago. So you can answer that for him, A. And then B, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of this at MTM right now. People diving right into the deep end of options, maybe perhaps when they're not quite ready, it should maybe be be going in the kiddie pool first, sir. Uh, yeah. So the answer to the one question that I can answer is that equity options, which is a stock option, they re, they expire. Excuse me. They uh, yeah. Well, they expire on expiration Friday uh, at three o'clock Central Time. Um. Right. So and you're saying if the option expires tomorrow, today's today's Wednesday, I think. Right. So it won't be expiring tomorrow. It'll be expiring Friday. And that is at three o'clock central time. Now, all that being said, and I, uh, you know, Mark said that he doesn't want to pick on anybody, but Mark likes to pick on people. Don't let him fool you. Um, Only you really, Dan, just you. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um this is a bad time to be asking these questions. You should never make a trade unless you know exactly what your risk is, how much you can lose, exactly how much you stand to make if things go your way, what your at expiration break even is, what your profit target is, what your loss target is. So there's a whole bunch of things that need to be lined up and defined before you even think about thinking about making a trade. Um, because, you know, at this point, if you have these questions, you, you're not in the, the command of the trade that I would like to see you in. I would like to see you be very confident in your understanding of the, of the predicament that you're in. Um, predicament's a bad word uh, of the, of the risk reward profile that you're in so that you really understand the scenario. Uh, I, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say on that. Yeah. You know, we counseled him to, to close it out. Clearly he didn't really understand what he had on it. We would counsel that to everyone out there in a similar position, try to educate yourself. Hopefully your broker should have some decent, again, I haven't kicked the tires on a lot of the educational offering. I know Robinhood was woefully lacking 
and educational offerings. They're trying to improve that. I haven't checked in recently to see how great of a job they've done. That's why we put out this content for you. That's why guys like Dan exist. So there are alternatives out there if your broker is dropping the ball. I would maybe also encourage you maybe to migrate to a broker that does a better job of doing that education. At the end of the day, you know, most of these brokers are charging similar amounts for the options out there now. There's no more ticket charge. You're just paying a per contract fee. So if you're not getting the, the, the freebie bang for the buck anymore, go to a little bit better broker who can maybe help you through this as well. At least explain to you that there is no Bank of America option. There's a lot more than just one on a particular name. But again, we love all of you out there. We, we say these words to try to help you, to keep you in the game. We've seen this, this play out before. Dan and I have been around this game for a bit. We've seen waves of interest and enthusiasm and options before. Maybe not to this degree, but they have existed many times in the past. And what often happens, unfortunately, is people get in over their heads, they get burned, and they don't come back. We don't want to see that. We want to see Halal and everyone else do fantastic trading options. That's why we're here. So we, we just don't don't burn yourself before you get started. Start slow. Start er, start easy. One lots small stuff. Paper trading. Listen to educational content. Engage with educational content, and then get the ball. Hey, start with my favorite, the covered call. It's a little bit more straightforward. It's a quasi set it and forget it strategy. And then maybe you wouldn't have some of these questions. All right. Speaking of questions, Dan, we got a follow up. From our buddy Alexander from the Netherlands. I remember he wrote in a few episodes ago. I do believe he had a question about about diagonals. He sent in a a follow-up. He says, hi, guys. Thanks for answering my question in the show. It was about verticals versus diagonals. I have been pondering how to cover the Achilles heel of the credit put spread. Just before expiration, when the long leg is no longer giving you any protection, but the short leg is still giving you risk. But I think I will go with you guys and roll the entire thing timely to avoid the situation altogether. Unless the volatility term structure is invitingly downward sloping. <laughs> in that case, I will give the diagonal a shot. He puts in parentheses by only rolling the long leg. I can't really share my vertical versus diagonal experiences because I have just been trading it for less than a year with markets only going up. Keep up the great shows. Alexander from Amsterdam there in the Netherlands. Well, yeah, that was a great. I remember that was a great discussion we had on the show. I actually... I put it out to a couple of other of our shows as well because it was a good fodder for discussion. I remember you and I, Dan, that was the notion of he had that short put credit spread and he wanted to roll the long leg out a week. And it was doing that time and again because he thought that would protect him and get a little bit more bang for the long call or well, should be long leg buck out there. I wasn't a huge fan of it. You weren't a huge fan of it. A lot of people I've talked to about this strategy, most of them have kind of come down the same thing that you seem like you're, you're spending extra money for limited to no gain on this strategy but you are thinking the right way if the if the <laughs> if the term structure is aggressively downward sloping you can go out a week and get the heck of a deal for that long leg then yeah go for it that certainly would be a scenario where i wouldn't mind it but in general i think keeping it all in one month keeping it together rolling it that was all kind of a way to keep it a little bit more straightforward for you and probably make it work a little bit better so dan what do you have to say for our our follow-up here from our buddy from the netherlands he's going to kind of do what we recommended and keep it all in the same month to make his life a little easier. Yeah, I, I, I like the way you're thinking. Um, options can get oppressively complex when you're adjusting and rolling. <clears throat> and there's a lot of different criteria to look at, you know, just analyzing an option position. So I'm a huge fan of keeping it as simple as possible. You know, I mean, that said, every once in a while, it, you know, there becomes a way that's a little bit more complex than than a typical way that that makes for a better trade. But, you know, don't start getting complex just for the sake of getting complex. Keep it as simple as you can and um, and, and keep going. Alexander, I like the way you're thinking, man. Uh, keep it up. Keep moving forward. Keep 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 thinking these things through and uh, and you're going to do great. Yeah, I asked him. I remember when we talked about it last time, I asked him about some results. He says he can't really share them yet because he doesn't have that many. But I would love to see his results and how this works for him over time, just out of curiosity, how he got onto this kind of strategy. Sounds like he cooked it up himself. We'd love to see our audience coming up with new ideas and new techniques. So keep it up. we love to hear from all of you. It's like our next listener here. This is Stephen Womack. He says, Dear Mark and Dan, I'm a newbie options trader. I started getting serious about options in January 2020. And in my first year, closed 241 trades. I have a small account and made a couple of painful beginner mistakes, but still managed to come out with just short of $2,400 profit at the end of the year. This year, I've gotten even more serious. I rolled one of my 403B retirement accounts into a self-directed TDA account 
and I'm trading options out of that account as well. So far this year, I've closed 150 trades. He's pretty active. Uh, with 91.33% of them profitable and just over $8,700 in profit. Well, congratulations, Steven. He says, I credit you guys with being a huge part of my ongoing options education. I think I've listened to every episode of Options Bootcamp and a large number of the Option Block and the Advisor's Options episodes as well. Every time I listen to you, I learn something. You become my options heroes. I also appreciate and attend Dan's frequent MTM free webinars. When my account grows to the point where I can comfortably afford it, I love to sign on as an MTM client. Well, that's, you know, that's great to hear, Stephen. I'm so glad that you're doing well. This is an, an example of taking the right approach, listeners. Start off, start learning, start doing the basics, listening to great educational content, wherever you want to get it. It doesn't have to be us. Get some great content, start learning this stuff, and then start applying it slowly over time, and then scale up as you become more knowledgeable and become more comfortable. That's exactly what Stephen is doing, as opposed to our earlier listener who kind of just dove into the deep end of the pool and didn't really understand what they were doing. So we're glad to hear that it's working well for you. We're glad to hear our content has played some small parts in your success, Stephen, even though I think you're the driver behind most of it out there. Dan, we have to say for our, our listener, Stephen, who sounds like he's having good results, sir. Yeah, Stephen, my man. He, Stephen's part of the MTM family. Uh, we, we, we love having Stephen in our webinars and, and such. Um, you know, the one thing I'll say, Steve, is, you know, when my account grows to the point where I can comfortably afford it, I'd love to sign up, at, you know, to, to, to take some classes. And that's like saying, once I can swim across the pool, I'm going to take swimming lessons. You know, I mean, the more you learn, the more you earn, man. Like, like get that training up front always. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter to, to me, which, you know, at what time you do it now or later, but it matters greatly to you, I think. Uh, so don't be afraid to, uh, sounds like you've got some winners here, right? Don't be afraid to reinvest some of that into yourself, into education so that, so that you make it easier on yourself so that you're, you're, you're more able to move forward and keep doing all the great things that you're doing right now. Um, so yeah, the, I, I guess that's the only thing I would say besides great job and keep it up, my friend. All right, Dan, we get a lot of love on the show. I just exhibited, but you know, we're big boys. We can take the heat too. So we, we don't get entire love. We get a lot of love. <laughs> some people have issues too. So let's give them some time to air their grievances. Dan, what do you think? Think we can handle it? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, seeing as this is one way communication, we can just uh, heckle them and make fun of them. And <laughs> what do they get Mock them about? mercilessly. Well, let's see. First off, we've got a, a three star review here. I think this came from iTunes. He says, no one, just a regular folk. OK, that's his title. He says content is good and well explained. Some of these are very confusing. So how <laughs> wow, they come up with their ratings. But I digress. Then he goes on to say, however. Some guests say hum. I think he writes ham. I think he means hum. Hum so many times. Hum that I hum can't focus hum on hum what they are hum saying. But in general, it's a good show. Dan, I, I wonder who we could possibly be talking about, sir. All your hummings getting us three stars. <laughs> I, do I do I say say that? I don't really. I I've never noticed. We all I have mean, our vocal ticks, sir. Hmm. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, go. you know, hey man, if I'm thinking about something like that, it's part of the, you know, vernacular. Uh, I mean, you're supposed to say, hmm, when you're thinking about something. Right? Like that's a, that's a word, man. I'd play that on the Scrabble board, and if somebody challenged me, I I wouldn't take, I wouldn't move those letters. <laughs> well, listeners, just think about it. The ones that you're hearing on the podcast, think of how many more our audio editors actually caught and removed. They can't get all of them, so you're only getting a smidgen. Of the hums I'm getting live here from Mr. Peel. Let's go up. Now we got four stars. And this is another one. It's confusing to me. <laughs> the text and the rating don't seem to jive. He says, uh, four star. This comes from Informapod. He says, way, I think he means two with two O's. He wrote way too O, T O. Way too speedy and bouncing around to be effective at times. Uh, some great concepts get mired and more complicated. That makes it hard to follow. And he said one episode, their math made no sense. I don't know. I'll have to check on that. But I think our math is usually pretty good. But he goes on to say, after all that, saying it sounds like he doesn't like the show. Then he goes on to say, but brave and much appreciated as distilling such complexity and the varied levels of listeners understanding is daunting. And he puts, and I thought I was a fast talker, exclamation point. Thank you. All right. I'll take that last one. That's on me, Dan. I am 
clearly the fast talker of the bunch. You can say many things about Dan, his homes and everything else. I don't think fast talker is one of them. But yeah, I, I get excited when I'm talking about this stuff with you guys. So clearly that comes out in a rapid rate of speech. So I will definitely take the hit for that one. But it sounds like Dan, it sounds like he didn't like the show, but then he loves it and gives us four stars at the end. So I'm confused, but I guess I'll take it, sir. Jeez, uh, is that what they call constructive criticism? Oh my goodness, jeez! Like we're 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 like under the heat lamp today over here, Mark. Oh jeez, we're big boys. We can take it. See, we get a lot of love, but hey, no, we we roll with the punches here too. It's nice to see we have so many reviews on iTunes. We're still well over four stars out there. So you folks like it. We're happy to see it. And if you have constructive criticism, we'll hear it. Hey, I talk fast. I get it. <laughs> Dan says hum a lot. Probably right. <laughs> But we love you all out there regardless. Uh, let's wrap it up with our regular listener here, J3 Dingle Dan. He wants to know, is it ever a good strategy to sell covered calls to avoid a margin call? That's interesting. So obviously margin call listeners usually, let's say you own a stock and your stock takes a hit. And now your broker is calling you because you bought that stock on margin to say, hey, you know what? You need to deposit some more money. Or we're going to liquidate this position. I'm trying to think of a scenario, Dan, where turning around and just immediately selling out a covered call is going to remedy that. You don't get that money in your, it's not like they're handing you, oh, here's that premium. Here you go. It's yours. That's not how it works. So I don't think a covered call is going to do what he wants it to do, Dan. What are your thoughts on this scenario? Um, yeah, I was looking at that and I was thinking maybe if like expiration day is today, and if it is a margin call, you own the stock and, and presumably the stock has fallen a great deal, which means implied volatility is probably high. Um, maybe it's a way to sell an at the money or slightly in the money call and just sell out of it and be able to sell it out at a slightly better, uh, you know, cost basis. Maybe. I, maybe that's what he's thinking. That'd be a good question for a broker to see how they treat that. Because you're right. If you're doing that, if you're selling an aggressive at the money or in the money call, then it's like you're quasi selling it, but you're not quite selling it. So the broker may not be satisfied with that because they're not getting their, their capital right now. And, it may, and they may still want to come in and liquidate the position anyway. So, yeah, that'd be a good question to see how different brokerage firms would handle that. Then you're effectively doing the same thing. Like Dan said, you're getting a little bit better because you're getting that time premium in there. But other than that, you're not accomplishing much more than getting a little bit extra all right dan since we we took our lumps before let's let's actually wrap it up with a little bit more love here so we can wipe that tear away from dan's eye the person made fun of his humming <laughs> let's go here now there's five star reviews comes from the google play store for our app you guys can get all of our content via our app as well if you want to leave reviews there i know a lot of you do feel free this comes from oh this is regular listener Rebon gorges i recognize that name he says this app is very simple you can listen to all the old episodes if you are new to options uh, that part of the app, he says, is called Options Bootcamp. And you can check out Options Playbook as well. These guys have been going for over a decade, and they put out content daily, five stars. Well, thank you for that, Revon, and everyone else out there who takes the time to rate and review us. Good. If you don't like Dan, you know, take it up with him. <laughs> we take all your, your viewers. We love you all out there. And you guys, again, are the reason that we do this show, to hopefully get you on some examples like one of our listeners who's been progressing and doing well versus some of our other listeners who are just diving into the deep end of the pool and figuratively drowning themselves in those deep options waters all right mr dan that's all the time we have for their questions keep those questions coming keep those reviews coming love to hear from all of you the good the bad and the ugly out there if we can't get to it on this show we'll make sure to route it to one of our other programs so you all get your questions answered don't you worry before we go, Mr. Pete, if folks want to reach out to you, maybe they got questions like some of our listeners. Maybe they want to join their free webinars or everything else you guys have cooking over there at MTM. Where should they go? What should they do? Well, this is one of the webinars that I mentioned on our last episode. Uh, we've got this pretty much constantly running webinar uh, on that is on covered calls. It's called Identifying Hidden Income in Your Existing Portfolio. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's, it, it, it's great. I spent a lot of time constructing it to break down covered calls into a very, very simple, easy to understand way. In fact, especially those of you who are brand new 
to options. I mean, I don't even mention the word options until halfway through the presentation. I think you're really going to get a bunch out of it. And and you can attend that webinar free by going to danpassarelli.com slash webinar hyphen reg, like in register, hyphen one. So that's D-A-N-P-A-S-S-A-R-E-L-L-I dot com slash webinar hyphen R-E-G hyphen the number one. Look at you adding a new URL to the mix. Not just MTM anymore, sir. You are branching out. Indeed. All right, check it out for yourselves. Of course, you can always go to the old school URL as well, markettaker.com. Two T's in the middle for all of Dan's goodness and a whole bunch more. On behalf of Mr. P and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for listening live. Everyone takes the time to rate and review us. We love you all as well. And we'll see you back here next Education Wednesday for another episode of Options Bootcamp. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.